What's it like balancing practicing to get better and obviously just focusing on recovering from the last games? Yeah, I mean, it's very common in this league with our schedule to have midweek games. Uh, but to start off the year with a stretch of of week long lead ups to games is, I think, a big advantage for us. I think, you know, even though um, it's been a strong start to the season for us, two good results against two good teams, um, we're looking at the game, these games in reflection know that we have a lot to work on and we're definitely using these week-long lead-ups to the games we have as uh, ways to improve. So. You talked about those two good results against two good teams. you got to be happy with where you are to start the season. Obviously, you have two road games coming up now before you get back home. How do you guys approach that you know, with that hot start and try to keep that going? Yeah, I mean, I think the only way you can approach it is just, you know, approach the next game, um, prepare the best, absolute best you can. Um, and just take it one training session, one game at a time. So that's the way we're looking at it. When you guys, you know, bring this team together here early in the season, uh, how do you guys feel about where you're at as a group? And is there any, I don't know, theme is the right word, but any like common, you know, message or or, or anything that stands out about this team so far this season that you guys really feel, you know, that stands out. Yeah. Um, it, <laughs> um, yeah. It's. Kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, our theme this year is throwing 1% every day, um, every training session, every game, to the extent we can. So, um, but like I said, that's that's our main focus, and that's how we're approaching it. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're going into Detroit looking at. Um, how, how is it, because I've spoken to Coach earlier about uh, just coming together as a team early in the season, how do you think the bond around your team um, early on, and how do you think that's going to progress throughout the season? Yeah, it's been great. And, you know, I think we have a, a great group of guys, strong characters. Um, it's a fun locker room to be in, and everyone shows up to training every day with a smile. Um, so, yeah, it's it's exciting, and we all want to play and work hard for each other. Um, and, yeah, hopefully those bonds will just continue to grow on and off the field. Preparing for Detroit, just um, it, what have you seen and it, what sort of – are you gearing towards getting ready for the, that match on Saturday? Yeah, it's a notoriously tough place to play. Um, they get a lot of fans, hostile territory. Um, but it's also, for those exact reasons, it's also a fun place to play for, for us. I think all of us are looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenge. They're a big physical group, um, so we know we're going to have to compete for, for first and second balls on set pieces. So, um, yeah, we're all just looking forward to it. Seems like you guys dialed up the weather to prepare you for Detroit today. Yeah, definitely. Not the, not the sunny... 65 degrees we were we uh got exposed to this weekend so um i guess that's a good thing is so. it tougher when the weather's very warm and then extreme colds when it comes to practicing um i mean 65 and sunny you can't complain about that so i'll take that every day but this this is this is good too you know it's good this is what it's going to be like up in detroit near the, the uh canadian border so um, you know, it's what we're going to have to deal with on the weekend. So, for you personally, I know you found the back of the net uh, the last game here. Uh, you know, how do you feel about your offense, and how do you feel about you know other guys also contributing on? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been good. It's been a good start to the season. I think we've been clinical with the chances we've had. Um, but you know, like I said, I think there's still a lot we can work on um, in terms of generating more chances, more clear cut chances. Um, but yeah, it's been fun playing with all these guys, you know, Khalil, Flo, Francois, um, you know, Bushi coming off the bench and having a massive impact on the weekend, scored the clinching goal, um, and more guys, you know, in our roster who can be dangerous. So it's fun. It's a fun group to play with, and we know we can grow a lot in that capacity moving forward. And then you talked about, you know, improving 1% every day and being happy with where you guys are at right now. How much do you see room for growth when you look at, you know, down the road later this season? 
guys do right now to work towards that? Yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing really to pinpoint per se. I think what we looked at this past weekend was um, we the moment we conceded a goal, we were under a spell of pressure um, for about five consecutive minutes where we kind of just allowed them to to keep the ball on our end. We didn't get big clearances on long throw-ins and, and wide free kicks. Um, and so that's one area, but I think just generally finding and identifying low ways we can improve in all areas of our game throughout the year. And then we'll look back and see how far we've come. I, I just have one more. Any March Madness predictions? We're rooting for uh, Duquesne. We're rooting for Duquesne. Robbie Dambrot's dad is the head coach. He'll be, he's in his final year of coaching. They just won the A-10 championship. So um, I don't have a bracket yet. I don't have any predictions, but I'm just rooting for the Dukes. Yeah, how does that feel, Dambrose's father, uh, being the coach there? That must be pretty cool to see that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome. We uh, yeah, we were watching. Some of us were watching the game on the weekend on Sunday. So it's yeah, we're all we're all rooting for him, rooting for the Dambrots, rooting for the Dukes. Khalil, big three to one um, win. Uh, just reflecting over that game against North Carolina FC, you had a goal and an assist um, in that game. Just um, reflection afterwards, after the fact. Um, how's it feeling going into practice this week? And you have a week time frame to prepare for your next matchup against Detroit City. Now, yeah, it was a good win. Uh, good team performance from everyone. Uh, obviously, last year we started the year the same manner, two games, four points. But uh, I think I could speak for all the guys that were here last year. It just feels a little bit different. Um, you know, everyone's really excited. Yeah, we have a full week to prepare for Detroit, which sometimes gets annoying. You know, you kind of just want to get there and get another game going. But uh, it's good to have a full week to prepare for Detroit. It's going to be a tough game away. You know, it's going to be cold there. I think it's their home opener. They get good fans. Uh, tough field and stuff, but you know everyone's really excited for it. Do you like the fact that there's a week span? Uh, are like pros and cons? Do you like it or y just too much time sitting around waiting? Um, it's it's a little bit of both. With with an away game, it, it is good. You know, obviously uh, the travel can get kind of annoying, especially with midweek games. So it's definitely good to have a full week to uh, you know prepare, travel, get there in plenty of time, and then recover. You said it feels a little bit different this year from last year. Um, what is it specifically, mm -hmm. if you could pinpoint something? Yeah, I mean, it's still early in the year, obviously. Uh, but just the San Antonio game, I just had, I had goosebumps the whole game. You know, going down uh, going down early in San Antonio, a really tough place to play, obviously. Um, and being able to come out there with a point is was a huge result. And then, you know, North Carolina as well. It just seems like we're – creating an identity uh, on the field and off the field as well. So it's really exciting for everyone. When you and Zach are, you know, both finding the back of the net, you know, Tommy's out there contributing. Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot of different guys are hitting their stride early in the season. How much does that help? And how good is that that everybody, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people seem to be really getting it going and early? Too. Right. Yeah, no, that's that's really important. Obviously, yeah, Zach, he has two goals already. I mean, that's, that's a big thing, getting your striker uh, – off the mark early, you know, and uh, now we're just focusing on keeping it consistent. I think that's the biggest thing. That's what's going to make the difference this year is just the consistency from the guys that are getting the goals or stopping the goals. 
rewinding a little bit, I spoke to Coach Martin um, earlier about coming together as a group. I know it's still early in the season, but ha how do you think this core, core group of guys is coming together as a, a team, and how do you think that will progress as the season goes on? Yeah, um, now it's important to have that core group of guys and uh, getting them close to each other on and off the field, creating relationships. And I think in, in two games, you know, I've, I've only played two games with some of these guys and we've already created those kind of relationships and those connections. So I think we're just focusing on getting 1% uh, better every day, uh, you know, focusing on Detroit, getting 1% better, creating 1% more of those connections and uh, should be good. We just heard you guys are rooting for Duquesne. Week Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's exciting. Uh, Robbie Danbrod's dad, coach there. Uh, it's awesome. I didn't even know that until a week or two ago. Um, but it's really exciting. Um, I'm usually, I mean, I went to Kentucky, so I'm a Kentucky fan, but I think I'm going to refer to Kane over them right now. You think Kentucky's got a chance to go far, though? I honestly don't. I don't know what seed there. I I honestly haven't watched any Kentucky games this yeah. year, so I don't know. But they usually. Uh, uh, bust my bracket pretty early, though. Right. So. I know they're a three seed this year. Okay, okay. So no, I'm excited for it. Yeah. That should is, be good. Is there a team bracket challenge brewing that you know? I was actually going to bring that up today to them. <laughs> I think that would be exciting. That's a that's a good team bonding thing. And just to see if anyone knows college basketball, I think it would be funny if, you know, the guys that watch the most college basketball, they're yeah. usually the ones that do the worst in the brackets. And then the guys that don't watch it all end up getting the best bracket. So I think that would be good to good to do. But half the team would take Duquesne to go all the way, probably. Hey, yeah. I'll do it, yeah. yeah. At least the final four. Yeah. <laughs>[no_transcription]
Heat fan, Cavs fan. I don't care where he plays. I'll, I'm supporting. Are him and your dad pretty close? I guess. Yeah. Um, I was able to catch up with my dad after the game in Brooklyn, and we're in the elevator, and he gets a phone call from LeBron congratulating him on the on the NCAA tournament bid. So, um, they remain very close, and that's been cool to see their relationship as well. Well, you probably got some of your teammates seeing you. They can get them an autograph, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they come to town. I think they play the Wizards here pretty soon. So hopefully, you know, maybe we can go check them out. Awesome. Well, well, my question, I asked a bunch of your teammates this about a big bracket challenge. Are you all in for a loud United bracket challenge? hundred percent. I think my problem will be I'll probably choose with my heart a little more than my head in terms of this bracket, but we'll see what happens. Coach, um, D Dan Bro and uh, Duskane, March Madness, a, a lot of excitement brewing within Loudoun United. Just your thoughts on that? Yeah, obviously tremendously. You know, happy for for Robbie and his father. You know, you know, tremendous coach has a great career. Obviously, has announced. You know that I think he's stepping out at the end of the year. But you know what a journey he's been, and to make a run in the you know A10 tournament, and and you know what a what a week he's had there. So. You know, uh, Robbie was able to go up and, and spend some time with his family and celebrate the victory. So we're obviously all all Duquesne fans this week in support of him. And, and you know, we'll be watching Thursday when they when they tip off. Cool. And, uh, you know, just talking about you guys specifically as a team, getting a couple positive results so far this season. Um, you know, how do you feel about where this team is right now? Um, some of the guys are saying that they feel the difference between now and when a year ago. That there's a different vibe how do you feel yeah I, I agree I think it's a totally different team I think you know we, we went out and we you know added a bunch of pieces a bunch of guys that were you know first and foremost high character good people um, you know I think anybody at this level can play and is talented you know and we were fortunate to add some pieces that really fit into what we're trying to do um, and, and some very good cultural pieces and guys that compete guys that have experience guys that know the league and guys that were ambitious to make this a special project. And, you know, and I think when we, we assembled our, um, you know, our roster and our coaching staff, those were key things that we were looking for. And, and we feel like we've done it. And, you know, we're going to go through adversity this year. We know that, um, you know, for us, it's preparing every week and, and trying to get the best result you can. And, and that's really where we are. The guys have been focused on the now and, you know, their feet are in the, you know, on the ground here. And, and that's the key for, for success. So uh, a uh, uh, one point in San Antonio, three points in the one against North Carolina, a week time frame before your next match against Detroit City. Taking that week as a coach, you, do you sort of like that? And how do you prepare with a week span to get your players the practice they need plus some rest, I, I would imagine, as well? Yeah, I mean, when you play a home game, you typically you, you can typically push a little bit more during the training week because you don't have to travel. So for us, Sunday was off and a chance to spend time with family and friends who enjoyed the you know obviously the first game. But then it was back to work Monday and recapping what what where we were good, where we were bad, and what we need to improve on. Tuesday, Wednesday are really you know physically tough days. Thursday is typically a preparation day. And then Friday, you know, the work's done and it's a little bit of fun to, to put the guys in a good mind frame for the game on Saturday. So for us, we, we love a week um, break in terms of, of the schedule because it, it allows you to properly prepare from one game to the next. And, you know, when you start getting in, you know, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, you're looking at, you know, regen, prepare, play, regen, prepare, play. So for this, this is our, our chance to really push. And going into a break next weekend, um, we're using this 10 day spell to really see how much improvement we can make in 10 days. And playing three road games in your first four, does, does that help a team maybe come together a little more, kind of get their lumps in early? Does, does that make a difference? Oh, hundred percent. The more time you can spend with people, the better. And, and one thing we're really stressing is connection and, and, and a feeling of belonging to a, a bigger cause, which is, you know, where the guys have gone with a lot of things. So for us, getting on the road, having some laughs, spending some time together, um, you know, going through some tough places where actually I think 
uh, Tommy McCabe told me we are three oppositions um, home opener. So you, you, you look at big crowds and home openers as well. So for us, you know, being in adverse situations in Detroit and in, in San Antonio in particular are two of the tougher environments you're going to get into. Um, and to get them early, it really brings – it lets you find out who you are. And I think we found out a lot of who we were in San Antonio um, and where we're going in North Carolina. So that was a, a lot of positives in the last couple of days.